Hello everybody, I'm Storm here, and today we're going to be starting up a new series of Crusader Kings 3. Uh, I did a Crusader Kings 3 series uh, back when the game first released, which is quite a while ago now. Um, and then when that series concluded, I decided that the next CK3 series was going to be after the first major DLC released, which it has, the Royal Court DLC, and in fact, that's actually been out for a little while now as well um, because I just haven't had an opportunity to squeeze uh, a new series in until now. That is what we are going to go ahead and do. So, we're going to be starting in the 867 bookmark, as I tend to like to do. And because we're going to be, you know, this is going to be my first series with the Royal Court DLC, which I have played a little bit on my own, um... I do want to start in an area where we're going to have relatively quick access to those new features. And I also want to play in an area that I never really played before in Crusader Kings, either 2 or 3. And so that's going to be, you know, Africa or Asia. And I've come to the decision that we're going to be playing in... Africa. So, let's get down in here and let's find a place to start. Now, the Royal Court um, additions to the game are limited to feudal kingdoms, feudal kingdoms only. So, we need someone who's feudal and Someone who is a kingdom or close to being a kingdom. So, if we go over here to governments. 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 We only have two options for feudal in Africa. Here or here. So, we have... Makuria... Fairly sizable. Now, Heady Kingdom, which means that's a duchy tier only. Um, if we look at the kingdom titles, though, pretty close to being able to make the Kingdom of Nubia. So that's actually not a bad option. The only real potential issue is the fact that we're bordering a rather sizable um, Muslim realm, which may or may not be a problem. If we can grow fast enough and gain enough power quick enough, it probably won't really be that much of an issue. Option B is over here. We have, what, these three, I think, were feudal. Yeah, this, this, this. So we have Abyssinia, Engot, Engo, County, Goa, County. Now this is already a kingdom. So that's already what we would want. So the initial goal would be to consolidate Abyssinia, I think. Maybe build the empire of Abyssinia. As a long-term goal. Right. 
I think I think that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go Abyssinia. Coptic, Ethiopian. Uh Gregarious, Paranoid, Brave. I don't like Paranoid. But Gregarious and Brave are pretty good. They could create a new ruler, but I think we're just going to keep all the game rules pretty much the same. Just keep everything on default. Okay. Um. Let's start. We are unmarried. We have no children. Our heir is our half-brother. Okay, how old are we? We are 32 years old. That's not bad. What's our stats? Learning's crap. Intrigue is good. Stewardship is good. Marshall's decent. Even the dipl uh, diplomacy is eh. Okay. We probably just want to marry someone who has good diplomacy. We currently hold two, two duchies. County of Inparta. And County of Lasta here. What is my home duchy? My home duchy is this. We have a powerful duke who is our half brother. Um, okay. We don't actually hold any dunchies directly. That's a bit of a problem. Huh. Am I his heir? I am his heir. Hmm. Oh, look at that intrigue score, though. Ouch. Uh. Are you my spy master? I'm guessing you're my spy master. You are my spy master. Okay. 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 Uh, we can work with this. We can work with this, I think. Alright, so here's the uh, Royal Court. We have three new court artifacts. We have the Philomonid House Banner. And the dynasty banner. Okay. We have the skull of St. John the Evangelist. Really? Okay. What's our income? 1.5. I kind of do know how this works a little bit. So right now, our court grandeur is below target, I think, which is going to come up to about here.
So I don't think we really need to make any adjustments here, and I don't think that we can afford any adjustments at the moment. Well, I mean, what are we paying? 0.2? I mean, I could bump up the fashion. I'll increase my prestige. Court grandeur bonus. Two point four. So if we wanted to bump, that would be what point six. You know, I'm gonna hold off on that scholarly court. Okay. Order and guest opinion. Monthly lifestyle experience. Learning per level of fame. Learning administrative court. Building construction time, building construction costs, promote cultural acceptance, development, growth, and realm capital, vassal tax contribution. Well, we'll keep it scholarly for now, I think. Court language is Ethiopic. Which I don't think we can really change that because we don't know any other languages. We can hold court. We're going to hold off on that. Oh, we have an available dynasty legacy. Um, I like to take noble veins. We need a lifestyle. What are we short in? We're short in diplomacy. But... I'm actually thinking what we're going to do is we're going to take intrigue. Because we have an Intrigue Education. We already have a Seducer. Really? Skullduggery. Scheme, Subversion, Secrets. Agent Acceptance, Intrigue plus three. Yes, we're going to go Skullduggery. What do I currently had? Like, Weeds in a Garden. Fertility plus 30%. Okay. Enticing Opportunity. Scheme, Power. Seduce, Scheme, Power plus 30%. Okay. Unshackled loss removes your attraction penalties in seduce schemes. Home advantage. Seduce schemes suggest chance against own courtiers and guests plus 50%. You're no longer you can no longer critically fail seduce schemes. Okay. I need to get married. Alright. Age difference, it doesn't matter. Uh, maximum age doesn't matter. As long as you are fertile is all that matters. And traits, inheritable traits if possible. And you know, of course, female. We need we need to have some kids. And someone who has good diplomacy, if at all possible. Yeah. And someone who is young enough to have some kids. You are very, very, very good. Problem is... You're 37 already. You provide me little to no stewardship. Hail. Okay. You are Nubian and you're Coptic. What about you? Ooh, look at that intrigue. Agos. Um. Just a pretty decent all around character. Taste, though. So we are getting a plus 30% fertility, which should offset that. We're not lustful, right? I don't think so. All right, we're going to go with Hoggles here. Yeah, we're going to lose 300 prestige, whatever. Okay. I can vassalize... One of my neighbors.
Who are you? Ah. You know what? That's actually fine. Go ahead and vassalize that person. I can negotiate an alliance with my half brother. Fire a court physician. That sounds like a good idea. Yes. Antiquarium. You don't really have anybody who's good at it, but you know what? You're fine. You know what? You can be antiquarian. Go ahead and unpause. And declare a bunch of wars. We're now married. We have an alliance with our vassal. That's actually going to keep him out of schemes. We vassalized one of our neighbors. I can create the Duchy of Lesta. Beautiful. My marriage to Mikist Hagos. Realm expects us to throw a suitably extravagant wedding celebration. It is well within my right to collect a royal aid duty as part of this, but some may consider it tasteless to levy an extra tax during a time of jubilation. Uh, let's see. Do we want the prestige? I get the prestige back, or do I want some cash? You know what? We're going to take the prestige. That's fine. Um... Court event available. A courtier scorned. Why would you honor that boar Salama Zazeb with a position at court and not me? My courtier Retta is livid. Apparently she had been certain that the honor would befall her and no one else. Is that because I gave a position to somebody? You can become cupbearer. We're gonna jest like this. I should start paying you, or we can make her the court jester. You're just some random courtier? A courtier? You know what? You could be court jester. Boop. <laughs> All right, we can hold court. Let's do that. All right, so holding court. Uh, in order to be a successful ruler, I must act. Uh, I must actually rule in the various dilemmas and situations which arise within my sphere of influence. By officially inviting all of my subjects to travel my castle and petition me for aid. Um, I will be able to stay informed, sway the balance of power, and visibly show the world that I am in charge. I will increase court grandeur. Okay, so let's do it. Sitting on my throne, I gestured for my guards to open the doors of the hall. A stream of people file in, some lining up in front of my throne, while others move out of the way so they can simply observe the proceedings. At several moments, all movement in the chamber has ceased. All faces turn toward mine expectantly. In front of me, I count three petitioners lined up in an orderly row waiting for me to call them. All right. First up. Exhibiting Negus Anbasa Wadem's collection. My knight, Lama. Zazeb approaches me with a spring in his step. My liege, he says, full of excitement. I have a great idea that can bring you either money or fame. You have missed, you have amassed quite the collection of artifacts, my lord. Apparently. So why not put them on display? You could charge for viewing your collection or for free so that more people can, will view it. 
He clears his throat before continuing. People do have a tendency to want the things they see, so the downside might be that more people will try to claim your artifacts. I want people to pay to witness but a glimpse of my glory. We get paid artifact exhibition, which means we get 3% more monthly income. Some people must see to believe that includes the less fortunate. Free gives us prestige. It's not worth inviting the risks. You know what? They can pay for it. All right, a provincial merchant steps forward, clearly out of her element in my rich halls. I beckon, come woman, we don't have all day. Yes, my lord, she stammers. I am Fana, representing the disgruntled traders and freemen of, uh... Ohaito? In Tarta's greatest city. Barahun, our mayor, is a barrier to commerce and the town's interest. We humbly ask that he be replaced by someone else. Uh, let's see. We will call election early. Development. Civic meddling. What does that, uh, what does that do? Republican vassal tax contribution. Is the, I don't think that's a Republican vassal, right? Very well. You shall be the new mayor. 36%. Gains Merchant's Touch for 15 years. That gives us... It could potentially give us straight up plus one development. This gives increases the overall development by 50. Or the progress by 50. Merchant's... And this just gives it civic meddling. Um, 63%. What does Berhun have to say? Pays us a bunch of money to stay mayor. 80% chance. 20% chance it development drops. Alright, the crown will compensate the town's merchants. We pay 50 gold. The mayor improves opinion. Merchants compensated. You know, we'll just call the election early. That's fine. All right. Open carry. Two of my vassals are pushing for one another and jostling to reach my throne first. Ross Mercurios bows before me. My lord, murder is wanton in the city streets throughout the kingdom of Abyssinia. It would be civilizing if we instituted a ban on townspeople bearing arms, at least within city limits. A prince, Dil Nod, kicks him out of the way. Safety is each man learning to protect himself. Banning carry of weapons will castrate the townspeople. We shall ban weapons within settlement walls, but that gains 40 stress because we're paranoid. What does that weapons ban give us? Control growth. Okay. I don't think we have any control issues. Popular opinion plus 10. This is my half brother. Improves his opinion. Probably want to keep his opinion up. We shall solve this safety debate with violence. Ooh, hold the phone. I was challenged against my other vassal. A hundred percent chance that this guy gets wounded. Okay, I'm not your heir. Hmm. You know what? I like that 20 opinion for my most powerful vassal. We'll take that. 
As the last petitioner departs, various courtiers follow them out of the room, having business to attend elsewhere. Others remain talking amongst themselves about the recent proceedings. Soon the ceremonial formality of the proceedings has dropped away entirely, the hum and bustle of normal courtly life taking its place. Okay. Now. You're my direct vassal. You are my direct vassal. I really would like him to die before he has any heirs. But I can't do that if he's... Well, I mean, I could. But, you know, he's my spy master. <laughs> Um, is there anybody who is... Ooh. If I fire him... Hold the phone. I'm empty council position. Ooh. Could I reassign you to be chancellor? Right, that'll keep you happy. We appoint a new spy master. Very backwards. But this, this is the guy that would want to be chancellor, and this is the guy who would want to be spy master. Um I want you to support schemes. And can I plot to murder you? What are the chances? 81%? 95% chance to stay hidden? It's a gamble. But the upside is massive. Okay. Um, other things that we can look at here. Size of my army. 1,400 men. What do we have in terms of men at arms? We have three of four. We have some light footmen, we have some bowmen, and we have some armored footmen. That's not bad. Um, some light horsemen would not. Oh, camel riders. Hmm. The thing is, these are not quite as good at pursuit. Or screen as light horsemen, but a better terrain. Options. And they're they're camel riders. Can't afford them yet, though. But it's a thought. Um, who is the head of our culture? I am. Okay. What are we currently f working on? We're working on Cassus Belli. 72 years. Is your county Cassus Belli? Yeah, probably. Life and Spy Master cooperate. Excellent. Agents have joined the scheme. All right. We have uh, my half brother showing up to pay homage. Bringing you rich gifts worthy of your Majesty as token of my goodwill and servitude. All right. I mean, I gained 50 gold. I'll I'll take the 50 gold. I wait patiently on my throne for the arrival of Prince Dil Nod, who is soon announced and ushered before me. His kneels in deference, his attendants bring forth his gifts of coin and precious objects. The oath is taken, and scribes report his pledges to serve the kingdom of Abyssinia. Things do not go well from the outset. Uh, 
Uh, tongue tied. Okay. Your loyalty, not your tongue, is what matters. Yes. We can invite some people. A couple of uh, guests. We can swing around a couple bribes, I think. Ooh, hold on. There we go. Just one. Just one. No, 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 no. We don't want to abandon this game. All right. Fort Granger 3. My agent, the mayor, approaches me with a bunch of parchment clutched in his hands. I found an old architectural sketch of his castle. They might be a bit outdated, but look here. Looks like a tunnel we can use. Hostile scheme resistance. No. Scheme gains progress. What do we have going on here? Pariah of the court. One of my knights. I am judged harshly for my hospitality towards Dane, the criminal, who is avoided by almost everyone on account of their wicked faith. My failure to condemn and continued proximity to this irredeemable fiend is perceived as open tolerance, tarnishing my court's reputation in the eyes of the clergy and faithful. They have forced my hand, and I must now decide whether my courtier's crimes outweigh my affections for him. Surely something must be done. Are courtiers really so hard to replace? Ah, you are Jewish. Okay. Well, particular sect, anyway. It's not my place to judge. Arbor's criminals for five years. They convert. You know what? Go ahead. Convert them. There we go. Speaking of religion, I see that there's a couple of options um, that we have on that front. There is that little Jewish section over here. So we could convert to uh, Judaism. That would give us maybe like an ultimate goal of trying to reclaim the promised land or something like that. Um, or I was thinking we might flip over to, is somebody over here? The, this. An unreformed pagan faith. Christianism. And see if we can't maybe reform it. Murder, unrude. When the time comes, my agents will need a safe escape route out of the prince's castle, should anything go wrong. A detailed map of the local hills with all of its hidden paths and caves would be an invaluable resource. Pay a hunter for a map. Yeah, pay him for the map. We can take the stress, it's fine. Um, what are mass eviction? Then your guests packing. Brutal lowborn to fill a random court position. No, we're gonna we're gonna call a hunt. We're gonna call a hunt. Save some stress. Someone is raiding me with fourteen hundred troops. Unacceptable.
Bounding through the drylands, I am gaining on the majestic stag I've been chasing for hours. Just as I prepare to strike, I hear my vassal, Mare Kiffle. Kiffle? Cry out in pain. He has fallen and is now clutching at his leg. Um. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll tend to him. Looks they were able to successfully raid. I'm not going to bother chasing them down that much. The hunt is drawing to an end. We mount our horses and leave the dry lands as the light fades from the sky. Everything that could go wrong seemed to do so, but there were silver linings to be found. We gain some prestige. We lose some, some stress. So it's all good. The time has come. My agents are in place. One of them will pay the assassin the very night the deed will happen. Another will ensure the wall is unguarded. A third will leave a subtle trail of candles to the prince's bedchamber. Everything is in place. We have a 95% chance of killing the prince. Do it! It seems to have been difficult to get the prince by himself, but once the assassin finally did, he was not long for this world. Thankfully, my involvement in the crime remains unknown. I do love surprise visits. I inherited the Duchy of Aksum and three other titles. Beautiful. All right, expand the army. I can't afford to keep it operational. All right. We have uh, a new person that we can bring in as Chancellor. That went swimmingly. We now hold the duchy. Perfect. Now we just need to get this little bit. We'll see what we can do about that. Um, I can increase my crown authority. Files can be revoked. Files can be retracted. Yeah, pass that law. That's fine. All right, and my wife is pregnant. Excellent. We're going to have an heir. <laughs> All right, but I think we're at the end of the episode, so we will end here. I'm so far, so good. That has dramatically increased my income. Yeah, we will um, get our air. And uh, we'll see about maybe trying to consolidate the rest of the Abyssinian Kingdom as we move forward. We now have tons more troops. Beautiful. All right. So for now, hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Go ahead, like, subscribe, and comment, and I will see you next time.